Welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebi. Today I'm going to teach you how to make my pattern Maple Leaf Log Cabin. This pattern has actually been around for about five years. It was one of the first ones that I ever created when I started designing patterns and it was long before I discovered the modern quilting movement and just dove headfirst into that. But the pattern is really fun and I love pulling this quilt out in the fall to put on my bed partially because I backed it in flannel and it can get a little chilly in the Midwest um, in the fall. Um, but it's a lot of fun to make. So it's fat quarter friendly and you make the blocks in sets of four um, according to the pattern instructions. So you can make as small of a table topper all the way up to a king size quilt, which is what I made for my bed. And I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks on how to get the log cabin so they don't get too long on you and that they stay nice and neat as you're sewing and how to get scrappy. So I'm gonna show you some photos of the original one that I did and I really, really thought about fabric placement when I made this. This is actually one of the quilts that I show when I give a lecture on scrap quilts and how to pick fabrics so that it doesn't look like your entire stash threw up on your quilt. And when I chose these fabrics, I collected fat quarters for a long time and I was specific about what I was gonna put where. So I looked around at the fall leaves that I see and there were lots of oranges and maroons and some even some purples and reds and so those were the colors that I chose to be in my leaves. So today I've picked some nice orange from, I just rated the fat eighth bin at um, Quilt Lattice Anonymous to find a few that would work for that. And then so that those would pop like the beautiful leaves in the fall, I made sure to just pick some nice neutral gray and greens for the log cabin strips. That way the leaves are the star of the show. And in this case, it's kind of relative. I mean, technically, these two are my lights and these two are my darks, but you know, it's all relative based on what you put next to another. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to cut everything. You basically just need simple sewing supplies and you can download the pattern over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com to go with this tutorial. But if you are planning on making a big one, like I would say anything larger than a lap, I would consider um, buying the My Favorite Log Cabin Ruler by Marnie Michelle. I learned how to do this technique on how to cut your log cabin strips in a class from Marty, and I really loved it, um, the way that it works, because everything stays the size it's supposed to be, and this ruler makes it super easy. We're going to be using the one inch side, and it just tells you, here's where it needs to be if you're cutting a one and a half inch square, and here's where it is for two and a half, and so on. So you don't have to think so hard when you're cutting and you're less likely to make a mistake. So I'll demo how to use this ruler. If you're doing a smaller size, your regular six by 24 inch ruler is perfectly fine for this. But if you're thinking that you really wanna make this big, this tool makes it really easy. I'm not a big one into getting a lot of extra tools that you may only use for one or two quilts, but I actually have found that I've used this a lot more than that. I use this when I created my um, Stars and Stripes quilt, and also when I was cutting out fabric for my Retro Tiles quilt, and also when I cut burst, because those are all specific increments as well. And this one's great because it's got one and a half inch strips on one side and two and a half inch strips on the other side. So that way you can use it for more than one project and more than one size of strips. So again, not a huge proponent of getting a ton of tools that you don't need. If you're doing a smaller quilt, just skip this. But if you wanna make it big, this really helps cut a lot faster. So let's get started. First, we're going to make our maple leaf for the center. So the first thing we need to do is make some half square triangles. So I've set the pieces that are going to remain squares or at least for now squares off to the side. And I'm gonna start with my half square triangles for my little leaves that are gonna pop out. And this is really super simple. We're gonna make them from squares. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the cream side over so that the wrong side is pointing up. And then I'm gonna take my friction gel pen. I've got these in numerous colors and I usually can only find one even though I have a million. Isn't that how it always goes? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm lining up so my ruler's even with the points, and then I find it's easier to mark if you kind of work from the center out, and then just don't push too hard, because if you push, the fabric is going to move on you, and if you just kind of let that ball of the pen glide, it just kind of does its thing. Thank you. 
All right, so now I've got some lines marked and I'm able to now pair these up with the colors that are going to be part of it. And I do make each leaf one fabric. I feel like there's a lot going on in this quilt. And so by doing that, it kind of gives the eye a place to rest. Also by using one neutral for all of the cream background, that also gives the eye a place to rest and help makes this quilt really successful even though we're gonna use a lot of fabrics in it. Okay, so I've got those together. If you want and you're new at this, you can put a little pin going across that line at both the top and the bottom to kind of hold these together. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew a scant quarter inch seam down both sides of this drawn line so that way we can cut it apart and get double the half square triangles. So to sew a scant quarter inch seam, it's like sewing a regular quarter inch seam, just I'm gonna move my needle one needle width to the right. That way I'm sewing just a teeny little, a little bit smaller seam. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pretend that this line is the edge of my fabric. So normally we would line the edge of our presser foot up with the edge of our fabric. And this one, we're gonna line the edge of the presser foot up even with that line. Make sure you pull those pins out as you come to them. Now I like to chain piece these because it's gonna help me make these up a lot faster. So what I just do is I lift up the press foot a little bit and slide the next piece down and keep on sewing. When I've reached the end of my chain, all I do is I lift my needle up, turn everything back towards me, and now I'm gonna sew down the other side of that drawn line so that way I've got seam allowances on both sides of it. So I've got my two blocks now and you can see I've got a nice little seam sewn on both sides of the drawn line. It might be easier to see on this side, but I've got two seams here and they're both a scant quarter inch away from that line that I drew. So now what I can do is I can cut these apart and it's not super important that you're horribly accurate and that you are cutting straight on that line that you drew, but you also don't wanna to get too far to the right or left of it because if your seam gets too skinny, it can pop open when it's being quilted or just with regular use. So do kind of try to stay near the line, but you don't have to be exactly on top of the line. So now the magic happens. Now we have four half square triangles when we started with just two sets of squares. And that just happened on its own. We pushed everything apart. So for this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to press the seams underneath the dark side of the fabric. And I always talk about this, but just in case you haven't seen any of the other videos, what you wanna do is set your seam. And the biggest mistake I see people make when they press half square triangles is they just kind of plop the iron down right on the center here. And what that can do is it can create a pleat and then your and unit doesn't end up square, so that's not good. So what I do is I start with the tip of my iron completely on the side that we're pressing away from, and then I just real gently drag that up and kind of hold it for a second. And that way you get a nice smooth crease in the fabric there with no pleats. And so when you're trimming this up, it's gonna be the size it needs to be, and you're not gonna have to worry about it, you know, not being too small or anything crazy like that. Also, whenever we make half square triangles in any of my patterns, technically you only have to add seven eighths of an inch in order for the geometry to turn out right. But I always add a full inch to my half square triangles. That way there's a little bit of wiggle room. So if you find that you sometimes get triangles that are too small, just add a whole inch instead of seven eighths of an inch when you're doing it this way, and then you'll have some room to trim. Okay, so now we have to trim these up. So I'm gonna take my little six and a half inch Ulfa Frosted Ruler. I really like this one because I can see everything really clearly. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the 45 degree line of my ruler going along that seam. And I wanna make sure that I've got some fabric hanging off past the two and a half inch mark and then past the side of the ruler as well. And as long as I've got some extra there, then I'm not gonna end up with something that's too small. And also, as long as this 45 degree line stays in line with the seam, you're not gonna have any problems where your points don't end up where they're supposed to be. 
So to start, I'm just gonna trim on the side and the top. Move those to the side. And then I'm gonna give that a 180 degree flip. And now that we have trimmed, the side is now on the left and the bottom. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna line this up exactly with the two and a half inch mark as measured. Still got that 45 degree line going across that seam so that my points end up where they're supposed to be. And I'm gonna again trim on the right and the left. If you were left-handed, of course, all this would be reversed for you. So now we have a half square triangle that measures exactly the size it's supposed to and our points are going to the point so we're not gonna lose them when we sew them together. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the rest of the points that are gonna make up the leaves of my maple leaf and then we are going to make the stem. So the stem is put together in a similar way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my cream prints and I'm gonna turn them over so that the wrong side of the fabric is up. And I'm also going to draw a line using my friction gel pen on the wrong side of these as well. You could use a pencil too. I just really like these because the line shows up really nicely and I can see it really well when I'm working with it. Now working with one side at a time, I'm going to line this up so that the corners are together, but so that the line that I drew is going from one side to the other. And again, if you want, you can go ahead and pin this. You probably don't need two pins. One is probably plenty to keep this guy in line. Now, instead of sewing on both sides of this line, we're gonna sew directly on top of the line for it, or if you want, you can sew one needle width to the right, but it really doesn't matter. This doesn't have to match up with anything. Just to make it a little easier to follow that line, I'm gonna go ahead and put my needle back in the center position, find it a little easier to sew on top of lines when it's in the center like that. Now, if you're doing a bunch of these, and I recommend that you do, you can chain piece these together um, because what happens next, it's kind of inefficient if you're just doing one at a time because we've got to trim and press before we can add the other side. So I'm lining the quarter inch of my ruler up with that line that I just sewed down. And then I'm gonna give that a little trim. And if you really like saving scraps, you can save these, but I'm gonna to toss mine. So now we've got a nice quarter inch seam that we can use to press open. So just like before, I wanna set that seam and you can see that line went away. It does that with heat, which is another great reason why I love these pens. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and gently press that open. You wanna be careful because this is a bias seam so it can stretch and get a little weird on you. Um, but again, this one doesn't have to match up with anything. So it's not the end of the world if it gets a little funky. So now I'm gonna repeat everything working from the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this actually you can get it away from the board because it's so hot it is kind of from the iron it kind of made that line fade just a little bit so you don't have to pin this in place I'm not going to for the second one because it is a really short seam it's probably not gonna move too much on you So our center leaf is almost done. Now I just need to sew this into rows of three and sew my rows together and then we can get on to our log cabin strips. So I set my sewing machine back to a regular quarter inch stitch from here on out. Whenever I'm doing this to make it faster, I like to just put the far left to the center on all the blocks. And I just kind of line these up. They're really tiny pieces, so they're not really gonna get off. And we just trimmed everything up, so it should be all the right size. But if you're a pinner, you certainly can do that. So I usually wait to press everything until I have my rows completely together, but I do like to lay everything back out to make sure everything is still facing the same direction because otherwise I will sew one of the leaves together wrong. I just will, it will happen every time. So now I'm gonna go ahead and sew my two Z's to my one on the side to complete those rows. So 
So now it's time to press and it really doesn't matter what direction you go in so long as all of your even rows go one way and your odd rows go the other way, then all your seams are gonna nest really nicely. What I do is I go ahead and set that seam and then press it open, well to the side. All right, so now this one I press to the left, so this one I need to press to the right. So now this one's going to go back in the other direction. All right, now I've got to pin these together and then I'm ready to sew. So I'm gonna go ahead and just flip these right sides together and because we took the time to press them in opposite directions, our seams are now going in opposite directions so they butt together really nicely. So what I can do is just kind of line these up and I'm just, it's kind of hard to tell you on film because it really is a, a feel thing. Um, I'm not really like looking at it, I'm feeling it. I wanna feel that my seams are coming together and meeting nicely. It's kind of like a threshold in your house where the floors meet. You don't want there to be a gap or a bump, you just want it to be nice and smooth. So once I've got that where it should be, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a pin in on the right side of that seam allowance. I'm gonna do that on both sides. So now you're gonna see why I pinned in the right side of the seam allowance. I'm gonna go ahead and sew until I have my needle down in what is the left side of the seam allowance. Then that kind of acts as a pin and keeps all the points where they should be. Then I remove my pin and then I can keep on sewing knowing that my points are gonna be really great. Do the same thing on the second one. And at this point, I kind of just line up my bottom corners and keep on sewing. I'm gonna go ahead and press this one so that the seam is going to be underneath the middle row. That's because it's gonna be a lot easier to press it down that way because we have two points here versus just one on this side. So it's gonna lay a little flatter. All right, now we're gonna repeat just this time attaching the top two rows to the bottom. I'm also gonna press this one so that it is underneath the bottom seam. This time I'm doing it because then we'll have the least amount of shadowing when that's where you can see the little seam allowance underneath once it's pressed because this is a pretty light fabric that I've used for my background. Just because there's a lot of points in this block, I'm gonna mist this down. I'm just using water, but you could use some best press as well if you want. And I like to do that whenever I have a lot of points just because I feel like it's a good final step in getting everything to loom nice and flat so you have a really nice quilt block when it's all done. All right, so my maple leaf center is done. So now it's time to move on to the log cabins. I'll show you how to cut those strips to make it really fast and easy and then so they don't stretch out on you. So that's next. So as long as you aren't desperately in need of a new rotary cutter blade, you can cut all four of these fat quarters at once with the technique I'm about to show you. So I've got them all lined up here with the wrong side up on my cutting mat. And I am using the larger cutting mat. I know a lot of times I use a smaller one for the videos, but you do need at least a 16 or 18 by 24 for this one. So you wanna get them laid nice and smooth on your mat and you wanna make sure it's extending past the zero inch mark on your mat on the left side. So once you do that, you wanna take and fold these in half and like you can see that this one here is a little bit shorter than everything else. I want that to be kind of hugging my selvages there. So now I'm going to fold this in half and I kind of put my fingers in through there just to make sure that it's folded in half nicely there. And it is we're good to go there. Pull that up a little bit so you can see a little better. Now, just so you 
to make it super, super clear, you are folding the cut edge that was along the fabric fold before it became a fat quarter down to the selvage. So your selvage should be facing you. And so this should be uh, kind of fat, not long and skinny. If it's long and skinny, you didn't do something right. Um, but at this point, it should be about, let's see, about 10 inches or so tall by 18 inches wide. And if it's any other measurement than that, probably you, you didn't do it right. So make sure you do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off these selvages because we don't wanna use them in the final bit. I'm just gonna kinda of line up the one inch mark down here. I'm gonna give this a trim across. You can see I was able to cut through that pretty easily. But again, I changed my rotor cutter blade recently, so if you've spent a while, you may wanna do that before attempting to do all the layers at once. So now I'm just gonna take a peek through and make sure that I've got nice even edges and that I'm not seeing any salvages. I'm not, so that's good. I'm going to very carefully move this so that my edge that I just cut is on the left side. It's gonna be easier for me to cut that way into strips. And for all of the cutting instructions and for what sizes you need, make sure you get the Maple Leaf Log Cabin pattern. It's available as a digital download over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. It has everything you need for how to put this together. And then also your fabric requirements for all the way from a tabletop or all the way to a king. So you can make this in any size you want it to be. So now I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down into strips. And you can use the mat to measure or you can just kind of move them to the side a little bit like that. And then you can line it up again. Now there's enough extra here. If I wanted to make it really scrappy, I could get a couple extra bonus strips. But if you get a skimpy back quarter, you're definitely gonna be able to get enough to, for the pattern in this. So I'm gonna turn my mat around. So that way again, I can cut across my body here. And the reason why we cut, by the way, I totally skipped over why we did this. So normally you're gonna cut across the width of fabric. So from selvage to selvage. In this case, what we just did is we cut across the length of the fabric. And the length of the fabric has much less stretch than the width of the fabric. So that's what's gonna keep all your fabric strips in your log cabin from getting stretchy and out of shape. All right, so now what I wanna do is I just want to even up these edges a little bit so I'm working with a nice straight edge when I am getting to the next step and I'm just kind of lining up as I go to make sure since I've been moving these strips around I want to make sure that they're still nice and square as I'm cutting so I'm squaring up each strip individually here Here's where the Marty Michelle, my favorite log cabin ruler comes in really handy because you don't have to look for the line on your ruler. You can just look and it's real clear and there aren't any extra markings. So it's super easy to line everything up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to line it up for my first piece here. So I've got it nice and lined up over here with the part I need. And then I can just trim across the next bit. Okay, so next I need one inch smaller than my first one. So I can just move down a little bit and everything is already there for me. And I'm gonna move one inch smaller yet. Now, if we were doing a traditional log cabin block where the entire thing was a log cabin, you would be able to use these extra pieces here for something. In this case, I'm just gonna set them aside and they can be used for another project with scraps. But for right now, I've got my first three sizes here, and then I'm gonna get the remaining sizes out of my remaining pieces here. All right, so for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and cut to get my next smallest size, put on down another inch that there and then I'm going to come down one more inch yet to cut from this piece there now I'm going to go back the other way so the next smallest piece is going to come from the one that I just cut over here Move that out of the way so I don't get it then that fits nicely right there and then my smallest, tiniest piece is going to come 
out of this last little bit here. So there we go. In a couple of minutes, we've cut enough strips to do four log cabin blocks. I'm only gonna do one in this video today, but it was really easy, really fast, and it really is made helpful by the ruler. And again, if you're doing a small project, just use your regular six by 24. But if you're considering doing a big one, I would highly recommend getting this one, or if you just like doing log cabins, it's good for one and a half and two and a half inch strips. Now, because we've cut enough of the strips to make four blocks, I, assembled my original quilt in sets of four. And it was really nice because there were 64 blocks in the entire quilt, but I could get a set of four blocks together in a night. So I would feel very accomplished because every day I would have a few more blocks to add to my stack and the quilting, uh, the piecing for the top part actually went really fast because I just kept getting those instant gratifications along the way. So I'm gonna show you how I would set this up if I were gonna do four at a time. And then we're just gonna sew one together for this piece. All right, so I need my light pieces to start off over here. So I'm gonna put those in their spot. And then the rest I can set to the side for now. Don't need those. Now for the next longest side, I'm gonna again start with the light pieces. And I'm just putting them on in the order that they were cut. Just lining those up there. All right, now for the next longest piece, I need to have the dark side over here. And I don't wanna have two browns next to two browns because that's kind of boring. I wanna make sure that I'm alternating my green and brown. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the brown on the bottom this time and then put that green on top. All right, I'm moving on to my next largest piece again. And same deal, because this is going to be the same part of the block, I need to have my green on top. Those are the lights, so we're gonna set those aside for right now and again, get those on there. All right, so now the next largest size is again going to be the light on the left, but again, I wanna switch this up because I don't want two browns next to two browns. I wanna make sure I have my nice light green on top. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and lay the brown down first, then follow it up with the green, and then do that one more time so that I have four strips ready to go when I sew this. All right, now we're just gonna keep going in this fashion. So that way we continue to have alternating blocks. You're gonna continue just taking pieces off and having the light on one side and the dark on the other, and just keep alternating around as you go. All right, so for this design, we are not gonna use the dark in the smallest length or the light in the longest length. So you can save those with your scraps and do something else with them or donate them, whatever you wanna do. So now the rest of this just goes together like a regular log cabin. We're gonna sew our small piece to our center block and then the top and then the left and so on. I'm gonna show you how to sew through this first round and then you can watch as I sew the rest of them together from there on out. All right, so now I'm just gonna start sewing to the center. Now I'm just gonna sew one block together, but you've seen how I would lay it out if I were doing the entire thing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this and flip it right sides together. And you can pin this if you want to. I just kind of line up my corners because everything is fitting together very nicely. Um, if you've sewn an accurate corner inch seam for your center block, then everything should be nice and perfect here. And then also, as long as you have cut along the length of the fabric instead of the width, your blocks aren't gonna stretch out on you either. So on every single one of these, I'm gonna press so that the seam is underneath the strip that we just sewed on. Go ahead and set that seam first. And then press that over. Now I always, always, always lay it back down in 
the configuration to make sure I have it turned and orientated correctly. And because in some of these, you're gonna have the same size, like this one is the same size as this one, so you could get it flipped pretty easily. So you always wanna lay it da back down, make sure everything's looking the way it should be. Also, if you're doing four at a time, make sure that your strips are matching as you're going around. And that way you won't have a funny looking block when you're all done. All right, so now we're just gonna keep going clockwise around. So this is the next strip to put together. Again, you can pin if you want, or you can just sew straight through. seam again and press that open. Now I'm pretty happy with these points but if you weren't now will be the time to fix. All right so I've got it laid back out and I can see that this fits nicely and we've got our light and now we're moving on to our dark so everything is as it should be. So I'm going to go ahead and flip these right sides together and sew down. Pin if you want to. I'm going to skip that. One other great tip, if you're doing four at a time, you would chain piece all of these and then press them all at the same time and then lay them all back down at the same time. It makes it go super. All right, so everything is still looking good. We've got our first three on. And from now on, you're gonna have a U and that's the side that you're supposed to put it on. So here's what I mean. So here, we only had one seam to sew two. Again, only one seam. Now you're gonna have two seams. You're gonna have whatever you just sewed and whatever three back you did for that row. So now you know that this is the side that we need to sew this one to because this one has two seams versus one here and one. Also, now that these strips are getting a little longer, I am gonna start pinning just so that everything goes through nice and evenly. So I just pinned at the corners and at the center of that strip. All right, so you're just gonna keep repeating that process, going around the second row and then finally the third. Just keep sewing around and pressing as you go. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys little bits of it, but it's basically the same process. So if you've gotten this far, you're gonna be able to finish the rest of the block and I'm gonna go do that now and you should too. So this is it. We've got our maple leaf log cabin combo. I really love this block and it looks really pretty as a big quilt and we'll make sure to pop in some photos of my original one there. I did this one all in modern fabrics and it still looks a lot of like a lot of fun even though I did the original and traditional. It's definitely more of a traditional pattern combining those two um, blocks and the settings very traditional with the barn raising from the center but you can make it a modern prints and have a nice little table topper for fall to go in your home as well um, like I said I just kind of rated uh, my fat quarter stash to do this and some fat eights um, but you really don't need a lot if you're just doing the table topper you gotta collect for a little bit if you want to do a king and you can get the pattern which includes all the layout diagrams and cutting instructions for this over at shop.quiltanatomist.com. It is called Maple Leaf Log Cabin. We also have everything else you need to get this quilt, including the Marty Michelle ruler that's specifically for log cabins that I use to cut these strips really quickly. So if you wanna do a big one, I highly recommend getting that to go with it. Well, thanks so much for following along with this week's tutorial. I hope you enjoy it. Going a throwback to one of my original quilt patterns. Um, I can't believe we haven't done a video for it in like the five years it's been out, but there is one now. So if you've been wondering how to do this and you're looking for a great fall quilt, this is a good one to work on. And again, I highly recommend doing them in sets of four because you feel accomplished. You can get four done in a night and then you can move on and do some more the next night. 
Well, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and click the bell notification below so you can make sure you know when all of our new video tutorials are coming up. We publish them weekly. And you also can subscribe to emails over at shop.quiltaddictsonomous.com. If you subscribe over there, we'll email you whenever you get a new video that's up. Plus you get a 10% off coupon code that you can use on your first purchase over there. So you can get some things that you need to make this quilt. Thanks so much for following along and until next time, happy quilting.